once again, welcome. Thanks for tuning in to uh, Captain's Roundtable on Real to Real Outdoors. Uh, do us a favor, hit that subscribe button, hit the reminder bell. Uh, we'd love to have you see all of our videos. So we got a great group of captains tonight. So let's meet those guys and get this show started. I'm Captain Bobby Sullivan, Icebreaker Fishing Charters out of Ludington, Michigan. Hi, I'm Captain Ryan Bullard with Fishing Affair Sport Fishing Charters out of Ludington, Michigan. All right, today's episode of uh, Captain's Roundtable, we're going to talk about tips and tricks for purehead fishing. Uh, we're right in the midst of our our salmon run right now. It's just starting. The fish are stacking up at the pureheads, and uh, I think we can maybe come up with uh, our game plans or our uh, you know tackle what you're going to run, you know, any special tactics that you'll use. Um, but before we get there, we want to thank uh, Bush Light for the sponsorship of this episode. And as always, Captain Chucks for uh, getting this all happening and getting us all out there fishing. So who wants to start? I'll fire away. All right. So uh, I would have to say the number one trick uh, or tip that I could give to pure head fishermen is uh, a lot of times people troll too fast in front of the harbor. Um, you know, we're swinging a lot of meat, a lot of J plugs in front of the harbor, and a lot of people get out there and troll a little fast. Um, so I like to troll a little slower in front of the harbor when I'm in there. Um, another tr tip that I like to try is uh, I'll dial my divers out a little further. Uh, I'll put the highs on like three, three and a half, and put the lows on two, two and a half, just to get them out away from the boat a little bit further. That way you're not running your lows at you know 25 feet and your highs at 40. Uh, that way you can just get them out away from the boat a little bit. Uh, that can be a little challenging, purehead fishing, as all of us captains know, and sometimes purehead fishing is challenging with other boat tra boats, a lot of boat traffic out there. So, uh, you know, it's a give and take with lots of guys. You got to play nice out there. So, um, but that's about it. That's um, what I like to, that's where I like to start when I'm purehead fishing in the morning. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. And I'll, I agree with what he said. One thing I do uh, is I run slide divers a lot at the pureheads to mm -hmm. uh, get them away from the boat. Uh, normally I'll start out still on my shoot rigger. I'll run like a big white paddle, like Adam has in front of him there, pickled sunshine fly. Then I go pretty plug heavy for the most part, run a couple spoons. Uh, once it gets daylight, I'll maybe throw out a meat rig on a diver. Uh, but that's about what I do. Silver with red head. Once it gets daylight, number yep. three, that'll yep. get them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I I'm on, I'm in the same, uh, you know, the purehead fishing, I, I think there's a couple of different things that people don't think about when they purehead fish. One is, um, it, it, why are the fish there? You know, if the, if the, if there's cold water there, uh, it's totally different than if they're just staging in warm water to run. If they're staging in warm water to run, you really probably need to be right on the pureheads. If there's cold water there, you don't have to be on the pureheads. You can be outside mm -hmm. the other boats. You can be you know, north of the pier or south of the pier, or east or west, Straight depending out. where you're at. Um, so don't feel like you have to be married to to right at the lighthouse or right, you know, right at your, your mouth. Um, a lot of times, especially after that initial morning bite, if you slide out deeper um, or move to the north or to the south, you'll find fish, pressured fish that have just moved, moved out. Uh, I think that's an, an effective thing. Slide divers. If you don't use slide divers, you should learn them. Yeah, um, they're definitely yeah, a great tool. Um, I generally run slide divers on my highs, and then I'll just run uh, small divers for my lows. Uh, but I didn't, I have never tried to turn them out. I'm gonna, yeah. I might have to try that. Yeah, it gets them out. Sounds there like it might tangle it. me up, but it, I'll try it, it. It can, yeah, it can. Uh, I'll touch on that fact about the cold water in front of the harbor too. Uh, like you were talking about, Adam, uh, a lot of times, you know, those pressured fish or the warm water fish in the morning, uh, you know, at daylight, you know, they see all the stuff in the water. They're going to a lot of times vacate the area. They're either going to go out or go in. So if the water's cold, like we've had here in Ludington the last week in front, uh, you know, you get a chance to catch some coho out there, some mm -hmm. two-year-old coho. There's some two-year-old salmon out there, some steelhead. Those are all out there feeding on those alewives um, because the surface has just been loaded with uh, bait fish out there. So... Uh, you know, that's a good option too. You can make a couple passes across the front uh, and then slide out and, you know, finish out your day. Yeah. I mean, I started there, I started north of the, north of the lighthouse today and just trolled north mm -hmm. and I hit fish all the way out to a hundred foot. So, I, you know, don't, don't feel like you, I, I just don't always think it's the best scenario to be w mixed in with a ton of boats. 
Um, you can't run very much stuff. Right. And you can't turn when you want to turn. You can't yep. make decisions when you want to make decisions. Um, so that being said, you know, I mean, don't, don't feel like you have to be in a pack of boats to catch fish. Cause a lot of times the guy that's not in the pack of boats is catching fish. Yeah. Um, and if you see me out there, just, I'm probably not catching fish. Just assume that and, and, you know, go look for Ryan or somebody yeah. else, you know, <laughs> that's easy yeah. enough. Right. Well, how about if we talk about like, um, just your, your general spread kind of where you're running things. We'll, we'll just set it up. Like you're fishing 40 foot of water. Um, you know, what, uh, what, what rods are you going to run kind of what baits in what locations and, and we'll assume there's not a ton of boats so you can run a couple cores. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Bobby. All right. So like I said earlier, I'll start with a white paddle down the chute. I'll probably keep that seven, eight feet off bottom if I'm in 40 foot of water, then I'll run my out downs. I'll run one, probably five, six feet above that. The other one stack it up above that until kind of figure something out. I'll run a three color on one side, uh, depending on traffic. If I can only run a board aside, I'll run like a three color, then a five color out the other side. Once it gets daylight, I might pull maybe that three color, put a seven color out, get it down a little bit deeper. Um, and I'll play with my divers. I'll start them, I don't know, 30, 40 feet. Then I'll kind of work them back and just see what fits. Um, like I say, I'll probably run, start in the morning. I'll start with... Uh, well, this Lucky Charms is a good plug. I'll probably throw that on my three color to start. A green splatter on the other. I'll run a Ace High Double Glow or a Dreamweaver Double Glow down on a rigger. And I'll probably throw a Moonshine out, whether it's a green jeans or like here, I got the Raspberry Carbon or I don't know, a Happy Meal in there too. So that's about yeah. it. Then once it gets daylight, like I say, I'll switch to a couple chrome plugs, but I'll still keep the double glow and everything else out because those will fire all through the whole morning. So, yeah. Uh, one thing I'll add, you were talking about water temperature. Last year, there was a couple days we were trolling in front and we had to be in the muddy water. Uh, the clear water, the fish weren't really hanging in. Uh, I think that muddy water was going out to the south and every time you could get into it, you were hooking fish. So... That's a good point to pay attention to your watercolors. Obviously, before it's light out, um, you don't, you know, you can't see the changes. But you can assume if the wind is coming from the south, or you know, the wind is coming from the north, like you said, that the the dirtier water will run south. Yeah. So the, it usually follows the direction of the wind, uh, not so much current wise. Um, so that's a good that's a good point. Um, but pay attention to that. That's another yeah. thing that like. You don't, you know, we don't get a lot of that greenish water in Ludington yeah. that you see in like the southern um, ports. But we, you know, so we don't, I think, pay enough attention to color te temperature, uh, the color of the water and, you know, the temperature of the water. Um, but if you find that dirtier water, plus in dirtier water, it's easier. It's like walleye fishing. If you're fi fishing crystal clear water for walleye, even if they're there, they're hard to get to bite. Yep. It's a lot easier if the water's got a little stain to it. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, if it's really cold water, that might be a little bit warmer too. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 And a lot of times if we get a big roll, uh, you know, we'll have, you know, 40, high 40 degree water on the surface. Uh, and not like we have now where it's 70 on the surface, now bottoms 44, 48 degrees. Uh, so, you know, with that cold water, it comes that really light blue, clear, gin clear yep. water. And I've never had any really good luck with that. So, you know, when that's when, when the dirty water's on whichever side of the pier, I'll try to concentrate on that. And again, like Adam said, if it goes north up the beach to Epworth, I'm trolling north. So I'll just stay right in that dirty water uh, most of the morning if it's, you know, ice cold, gin clear water out there. Yeah, that's a, that's a good point. Well, I'll kind of give my little rundown on what I would run. So I'm generally running three downriggers. Um, if I have four downriggers, I'm probably running four downriggers. Uh, same thing as Bobby. I'm going to stagger him. Probably I'm on a five foot stagger. Um, I, you know, I probably are all going to have plugs in one paddle. Uh, I'm not real fancy with running spoons, um, in that water, at least on downriggers. I usually on a high diver, I'll usually have a spoon on one side and a plug on the other. I usually have a rotator on one low and usually a plug on the other low. Um, you do have to remember when you're fishing super shallow water that plugs dive. And they will dive 
three to five feet. So, you know, if you're in 40 foot of water and you're running a plug 34 feet down, mm -hmm. you're really close. And if it hits bottom, check it. Check if it. you think it hit bottom or you know it hit bottom, you got to bring it in because a lot of times there's seaweed or, or mussels or whatever on that. And that fish, you know, that bait's no longer fishing. Um, I do like to run cores if I can, uh, just a couple cores and run them super tight. And then I like to run a seven color down the chute and I'm not running it out all seven colors, but I'm just adjusting it as to the depth. So I kind of know where I'm at. I try to keep it, you know, close to the bottom. Um, when you're learning how to do that, it's, I think, better idea to run a spoon, a mag spoon on that because a mag spoon is less likely to get dirty if it touches the bottom. A J plug that touches the bottom is probably going to be dirty every time. Six hooks so. on there. It's getting, it's picking up stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So uh, Ryan, what's your uh, lucky spread? <laughs> well, my go-to spread would be, uh, you know, I just started in there the other morning. So, uh, you know, we run three downriggers down there. Uh, the shoot, I start, usually always start the same thing. It's a 10 inch Kevin's girlfriend with a pickle sunshine fly. Uh, I like to run it you know, about 50 feet behind the ball uh, in there tight to try to get it away from the boat a little bit. Um, I'll run uh, a couple of natural glow plugs on my out downs. Uh, run them, like you said, 20 to 23, 25 feet. Try to keep them five foot apart just to see where the fish are. I'll look at my graph and, you know, a lot of times if the fish are right tight on the bottom, I want to be just above them. But if they're suspended and on bottom both, then I'll kind of fish the water column basically. Um, I'll start my divers out there. I'll usually always start a flasher fly on my high divers and meat rigs on my low divers. Uh, white slick pickle, Kevin's girlfriend pickle rig always seems to be produced in there for me in that dirty water. Um, I love my cores in front of the harbor uh, if I can get them <laughs> out, like we say. Uh, so uh, threes and a five color on each side. Usually I'll run a magnum spoon on my three colors. And depending on the depth that I'm in, um, plugs on both my five colors, both the Lucky Charms, green splatter back, um, green green glow with a black ladder back was good too. So uh, that's kind of my go-to spread. Uh, and as the morning, as the daylight, as it gets more daylight, the sun comes up, I like to take my plugs off my cores and I like to, you know, spoon it up, slide out a little deeper, speed up the boat a little bit and see if I can pick off some of those other fish that might be out there. Yeah. If there's bait and that's a, that's... A a good thing to remember is if you're marking bait in the water, there is cold water near the bottom. If it's 70 from top to bottom, this probably isn't true, but there's generally juvenile fish or steelhead outside of the Kings. You mm -hmm. know, I don't think that they mix all that well together. Right. Um, but if you get out a little bit farther and I'm the same way, I like to, uh, you know, transition to spoons and speed it up. Um, that's definitely something that, that I'm normally, normally doing. Yep. Uh, one thing I will say, you know, when you're, you like to run cores, I like to run cores. I have no problem reeling cores in over and over and over and over and over. Right. I'm willing to do it. I'm running them. I shouldn't be. I didn't realize that. Yeah. And I'm going to run them tight to the boat. I'm going to reel them in when I have to. Yep. And you know, if you want to run that stuff, you have to reel them in. If you have five fish on and you're running that stuff and there's another boat, you still got to reel them in. Yeah, you know? and that's another so. thing too with with me running the the leader so long behind my shoot rigger, uh, and I tend to do the same with the plugs. Uh, you know, you get a fish on your low diver, you're gonna have to be Johnny on the spot and get those other rods out of there quickly. Yeah. Because I mean, they're wearing tight quarters; they're not out very far. Those fish are usually pretty green and aggressive, and they're gonna get into your other stuff. So, like you said, you got to be willing to you know get to cranking. So, I think my my only other thing is if you're going to fish the pier heads or any congested area before you get out there, make sure your nav lights are working. Oh, I can't Absolutely. say that enough. We, we had a close call. Um, make sure they're correct ago. as well. Yeah. I, I even try to get outside the channel, you know, instead of setting up right out front, I yep. get out to the side just to give boats the right away to get out. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So just, you know, just, there's a lot of courtesy with this. There's a lot of, um, you know, try and you're working together. You're all fishing in the same area. You have to work together. If you don't work together, it's it's tough. You know, I know some smaller boats that they like to hit a fish and stop. Yeah. But if you hit a fish and stop and it's dark, it's really hard for somebody to tell you, tell that you're stopped. Exactly. So just, you know, try to get somewhere out of the pack and then stop. Mm -hmm. You know, that's definitely a safer idea. Um, 
But I hope that, uh, you know, you guys are able to get out and enjoy some of this fishing. At least in Ludington, we've had a really awesome uh, year of Kings. We're very excited about uh, the next couple of weeks. And, you know, make sure you're checking your uh, fishing reports and, and checking out with your local bait shops. Always call Captain Chuck's, you know, get a fishing report, stop in, talk to the guys. They all know what's going on. So once again, thanks to Bush Light and Captain Chuck's for having us today. And I hope you can get out there and catch some fish.